loves in Christ, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your girl, Maddie Matt. So today I have an Advent Bible study for us. And today's title is, Do You Truly Know How to Wait? A little disclaimer, learning how to wait is significant for our spiritual growth. Point number one, expectant to wait equals growth. Let's dive into Luke 1, 5 through 6 and Luke 1, 7. Luke 1, verses 5 through 7. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abijah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. So after that reading, Luke 1 verses 5 through 6, we learn obeying God to the fullest, what, it, what that truly means. And then in Luke 1 verse 7, we see Elizabeth and Zechariah are a well-known couple who keeps God at the center of their life. But, 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 God has not blessed them with the child, something that their hearts desire. Now let's dive into where the tension comes in. So this leads to tension because Zachariah and Elizabeth are not able to conceive, which leads to pain and disappointment. And this is where the story unfolds. But the irony, which is very ironic, Zechariah's name means he whom the Lord remembers, but Zechariah is going through his life without being seen by God. Because think about it. So Zechariah's name means the Lord remembers him. He comes first to the Lord. But in this story, Zach so far in this story, Zechariah and Elizabeth are not able to conceive. So just keep that in your head. Now let's go to the real point number one. Point one, Advent reminds us that we are to wait faithfully in prayer. Turn with me to Luke 1 verse 13. Luke 1 verse 13 reads, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, because thy supplication is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. So that verse basically says, your prayer has been heard. God has heard our prayers. For example, Zachariah and Elizabeth's story is a prime example of waiting faithfully in prayer. Point two, Advent reminds us that oftentimes we are not faithful in our waiting. For example, we'll say, we believe God will do the same. God will come through, like we always say. But then on the other hand, we don't believe. We're worrying. Our thoughts are going crazy in our mind. So that's called unbelief. We don't have faith in God. Turn with me to Luke 1, verses 18 through 20. Luke 1, verses 18 through 20. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak unto thee, and to bring thee these good tidings. And behold, thou shalt be silent and not able to seek. Speak, my bad, speak until the day that these things shall come to pass. Because thou believedest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So the angel is basically telling Zacharias in these verses, is because you did not believe my words. That's why he's being punished with not being able to speak. His lips are sealed, tongue sealed, not able to speak because he did not believe. And just an important disclaimer, reminder, even in our doubts, God still moves because he is faithful.
So before we move to point three, I just want to remind us the reality of this message. The message is encouraging because God fulfilled their desires, but also discouraging because God does not always fulfill our desires. And what I mean by that is in life, you get from God a yes, a maybe, a not yet, or an absolute no. And we just have to trust him with that because he is our creator and he knows how our life is going to end. And he knows the middle. He knows the beginning. He knows it all. So just trust him. And um, yeah, let's just trust him. So moving on, I'm going to read some quick verses. Luke 1 verse 57. Luke 1 verses 61 through 65. And an important one, Luke 1, 64. Luke 1, verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Luke 1, verses 61 through 65. But they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all the and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the all the hill country of Judea. So with those verses, Luke one fifty seven, Elizabeth gives birth. Luke 1, 61 through 65, they named their son John. Luke 1, 64, Zechariah praises God after his mouth being shut. And that's why I have this quote, when you realize God made a way, you sing. And that's exactly what Zechariah did. As soon as God blessed him with the son or with the child period that he always wanted, his mouth was unsealed and he gave praise to God. Point three, Advent reminds us that God is gracious. Another ironic name is John because John means God is gracious. Zechariah's story proclaims God's graciousness. Now, before we close, I just want to give us some key verses to look back to. Luke 1 verses 68 through 69 and Luke 1, verses 77 to 79. Luke 1, verses 68 through 69. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us, and the house of his servant David. Luke 1, seven, Luke 1 verses 77 to 79. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. I'm going to close with a reminder, a simple reminder. God loves you and is gracious to you. We are at peace with God because Jesus gave his life for us. Thank you for watching my video, loves. I hope you and your family have a great Christmas Eve. Bye-bye.